Let's begin by opening a Finder window. And I'm going to change into my folder called My Family History, and then into my Surnames folder. So Finder aliases for folders are really useful for this particular problem that I'm going to show you right now because it allows you to have one folder wherein all the files about that person are kept, but to appear to have multiple folders about that same person. So in this example, I've got my Roan surname folder, and under my Maybe Related folder, I've got this 1930 U.S. Census file about, well, at the time she was called Minda J. Roan, but that's her married name. So if we back up a level here, and I open this up a little bit, you can see that there is no folder in here for Minda J. Roan. So I need to create an alias from the folder that has her married name. And her married name was Knudsen. So let me change this back here and go back into the Knudsen folder. So here you can see the folder for Minda Juliana Roan Knudsen. So what I want to do is put an alias that points to this folder within the Roan folder so that I can operate on this folder kind of remotely um, without having to have multiple copies of the same files. It saves file space and it makes it easier because if I'm doing research and I find, like in this case, someone called M Minda Roan, I don't have to remember her maiden name and all that kind of thing. I can just find that reference to her right in that folder. So let me show you how to create that alias. First, to create an alias of a folder, you've got to select the folder to which you want the alias to point. So I've done that by clicking on Roan, this Roan folder one time, this Minda Juliana Roan folder. And then if you go up to the Finder menu and click on File, and then Make Alias. And you'll notice to the right there of the little blue bar, it shows the command L in case you want to learn the command key for that. Command L will create an alias. So I'm going to click that, and it creates this alias file. So you can see that it says alias at the end. And if I change views here, now what I'm going to do is drag this alias folder to the folder that I want it to actually be in, which is the Roan surname folder. So I just do that and drop it. So I'm going to click on Roan to change over to that. And then now you can see within that folder, I have a folder for Minda Juliana Roan Knutson. And you can tell that it's an alias folder in a couple ways. One, on the end of the, of the folder name, it has the word alias. And then on the folder icon, it has this tiny little black arrow. Now because it has the black arrow, and that tells me that it's an alias, I prefer to remove the word alias from the end. And so I'm just going to do that because it makes it cleaner looking for me. I prefer that. So now I've got this folder within the Roan folder. So if I were doing my research along and I found this file in my rate maybe related folder, this 1930 U.S. Census file, I could simply look at my Roan folder and see, oh, there is Minda J. Knudsen right there. So I can just drag this file over and drop it into that folder. So now if I click on that that Roan, that Minda J. Knudsen folder, uh, Roan Knudsen, you can see now that that census file is in that folder. And that appeared to be under the Roan surname folder, but again, that's just the alias. So let me, let me show you what I mean by that. So you can see we've got that census file selected, it's, with, it's within this Roan Knudsen Minda Juliana folder, which is within the Roan folder. Now if I go up here to the Knudsen folder, you'll see if I click on the Roan Knudsen Mindy Juliana folder, that same file is there. And it is in fact the same file. It's not a duplicate of that file. So this saved me having two copies of a 1.5 megabyte file on my machine and simplified my processing of my research files by not having to maintain multiple copies of the same files. So one other thing that I want to point out to you, just a, a safety thing with when it comes to aliased folders, is that you can delete the aliased folder all you want, and it won't impact the target folder, the folder that you've created the alias from. So if I were to go back up to this view and just delete this folder entirely, it would not impact the contents of the Knudsen version of this folder at all. All of those things would still be there. All that I would be doing is deleting the alias. It's kind of like a pointer. It's just removing that. 
It's important, obviously, on the flip side of that, not to delete the original here and expect that the other version of it is still going to be there, that you'll still have full, uh, the folder and the files within the own folder because you'll have a broken alias at that point and all the files will be gone. So just remember, you can delete the aliases, but leave the original unless you know for a fact that you really want to delete the original files because that's what you will be doing.